Hello, this is Steve Harris with MuseThemes.com. Here's a quick video to help explain a couple of interesting techniques we've used in our deep space template to create some really cool effects. I'll cover how we used a tiled image of stars to create this scrolling or parallax background. And then we'll take a look at the map at the bottom. You can see that the map here spans the full width of the browser, but it also has this nice subtle gradient applied to the bottom. Okay, let's jump into Muse and I'll talk about this star background. So first, I'm just going to delete it out of the file. The first thing you need to do is go on the web and you need to find a seamless pattern or image that you can apply to a background. I'll pull up this image of the stars that we found and the benefit of using a smaller image that can be tiled is that it's a really low file size. So when somebody hits your site, it doesn't have to download this massive background image. So this image of stars is only about 500 pixels by 500 pixels, and it could be even less. The important part is that all of the sides match up so that it can tile seamlessly. So we'll jump into Muse. I'm just going to draw a rectangle here. I'm going to remove the stroke, and I'm going to change the fill settings. So if we click into fill, and we're going to fill it with an image, we need to select the image of our stars. So within my images folder. I've got this image called stars.jpg and we'll click open. There, now it's filled in the box. The next thing you need to do is select from the fitting options, tile. What this will do is tile it both vertically and horizontally. So basically it will tile it as many times as it needs to to fill the entire browser. Now, if we scale this box a little bit bigger, you can see that the stars will just fill it to any length we set. Next, let's set the motion scrolling background. So we'll go into our fill and we'll select scroll. We'll turn on scroll motion. And what I'm going to do is just set a nice subtle scroll in two directions. So we'll go 0 0.3 and 0 0.3, there. Now, if we preview this page in our browser, we'll get a sense of what it looks like. As you can see, when we scroll down, the stars appear to move. They move actually upwards and to the right, which is kind of a really cool effect. So I encourage you, play with different directions and set multiple scroll directions and speeds. The next thing we'll take a look at is the map across the bottom. If we jump back to Muse and scroll down to the map, you can see that this map has two really unique features. It's spanning the full width of the page, but it also has this gradient along the bottom. So first of all, the way that we can get this map to span the full width is we generate our Google Map embed code as you usually would. Go to googlemaps.com, select embed, and generate the code. Once you paste that code into Muse, we need to make a little bit of a change here. So if I bring up the HTML code we've embedded, you can see that it says iframe width 100%. We covered this in a blog post, but usually you wouldn't have a percentage value in here. You would have a pixel dimension, like the height, 700 pixels. So what you need to do is change this to say 100%. Once you've set that at 100%, just make sure that the frame edges of your rectangle touch the right and the left outside frames in Muse. Once you have those touching perfectly, if you preview your site, you can see that it will span the full width of the page, no matter how big you set your browser window. If we scale this browser window down a little bit, and expand it wider, the map will always fill it. So that's a really cool effect. The next thing we're going to look at here is the gradient along the bottom of the map. Now this isn't actually anything to do with the embed code, it's simply an overlay that we've applied in Muse. So I'm gonna select the one that's here and just delete it out quickly. And now you can see we have this hard edge on the bottom of the map. So let's draw a rectangle and we'll make sure that the rectangle spans from the left to the right of the canvas or the page. I'm going to turn off the stroke and now what we'll do is just apply a gradient fill. So again, bring our fill drop down and we're going to select gradient. Now the type of gradient we're going to want here is a white gradient to a white gradient. I'm going to make sure the direction is set to vertical and what this will mean is just that the gradient will go top to bottom rather than left to right. Now the most important thing we need to set here is the opacity. So we want the opacity at 100 on one end and on the other end we're going to set this to zero. So what this will do is create this nice fade. Now since we're putting this at the bottom of the map, I'm actually going to set the end point as 
and the start as zero. There, now the fade kind of works upward. So if we just move this down to the bottom of our map and make sure it's sitting on top of the map, you can see that we get this nice subtle transition between the two. And if you wanted to make this a little bit longer, then you can actually control how much of the map is covered. You can also change the focal point. So this is basically the area where it kind of transitions between that zero and 100 and becomes solid. So we want the focal point kind of near the bottom of the map. So that's just covering the hard edge. There is one downside to using this method. And if we go back to our browser, I'll show you. Because this is an overlay that you've put over top of the HTML map, if a user tries to grab the map right near the bottom, they won't be able to scroll around. They need to grab the map right in the middle where the overlay isn't applied. That's why you'd want to keep this overlay fairly small so that people aren't trying to grab it right at the bottom. That's just a couple of cool tricks that we thought were really kind of interesting and outside of the box with Muse. Thanks again for watching and best of luck building your site in Muse.